All right. Good morning. Ah, okay. Good morning. I see people getting on. How you all doing? Ah, drinking my drinking my elixir of the gods right here. This is this is my this is my drink here. And yes, good morning. Good morning, Talitha. And yes, as my cup says, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this. Psalms. For those who know some. All right. We're going to go ahead and let's get started because I want to honor your time. And I know that this is the holiday weekend, so this is not the uh, this is not the typical um, type of weekend. We're not having a peace church today, so I don't have a sermon to actually update you all on. Uh, but what I do, but but what I will do is I'll update. I do want to update you on some things that happened this week, and um, and so uh, so 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 that's what we're going to talk about. Some of the posts that I put up this week, and um, and then I also. Um, you know, just want to, you know, kind of, uh, I think, make sure that I bring it back to maybe something spiritual. But, uh, you know, but I'm definitely always about thinking, uh, thinking as well. So anyway, before we get there, let's let's get the formalities out of the way. Thank you. You are on with Dr. Thomas Rashad Easley. Good morning. Uh, you can follow me on um, Facebook dot com forward slash Rashad Easley. And that's R-A-S-H-A-D-E-A-S-L-E-Y. Instagram, I'm on as Rashad Ease, so just take the L-E-Y off. Twitter as well. You can follow me on Reverb Nation if you like hip-hop and music, because I definitely do that. My website, RashadEasley.com. Of course, you're here. And then my YouTube channel, YouTube.com forward slash R-A-S-H-A-A-D-I. All right. So, let's get started. Um, in the country today, what is this? This is... This September already. Oh my goodness, 2016, and um, we have um, a big um, loading steel. Okay, all right. Okay, I see you, Doctor Smith said loading steel bad signal. Okay, um, we still have a lot of issues around racism still happening now. Good morning, good morning, Miss Sanders. We're still having issues around race issues. We're also having issues around, you know, gender, you know, sexism, sexual orientation. And this is 2016. And notice that the same issues that we're having today are really the same issues that we had 30, 40 years ago. And um, I think that a lot of these issues are really, they stem back to human nature. And this is what I mean by human nature. Um, you're born and then you're raised and you learn what you need in order for you to be the person that you end up becoming. And in the U.S., I believe that we have a very consumptive or like a consumption type culture where it's like get, get, get all you can, get everything that you want and let's get as much as you want. You know, as they say, capitalism. And so the more that you accumulate, I don't know if you know this, like, but like, have you noticed that the more you have, the more you want to you want to protect it? The more you have, the more you you are trying to hold on to it. You're trying to do everything that you can to hold on to it. Whereas when you don't have as much and when you don't have a lot, it's like you're free to do anything because you're not tied to anything. You're not tied to a lifestyle. Like I'm, I'm not tied to getting my nails done or getting my hair done or having cable or having this nice flash screen television because there's nothing to hold you there. So you can always be out and you can be free. And, um, and so I think that that's really a big part of the problem we have in our country that also permeates around the world is you have groups of people who have what they have. And the truth is they didn't get it just by working hard and they didn't get it by treating everybody nicely, or at least their ancestors didn't open doors for them to be able to get it. And so it's hard for them to let go and hard for them to admit that. And so when, when it's hard to, to, to admit that, that means that you're speaking against their history. That, that could also mean that you're speaking, uh, you know, like uh, you're also speaking to, to who they are personally. Okay. Okay. Dr. Smith. Gotcha. And so, um, when you explore history, that's not a personal attack. That's just understanding what happened. That's understanding how, how we got to where we are right now. So um, 
when you want to protect that at any cost, I believe that that lends itself to why you have a lot of people who behave or act racist or behave um, and, and act sexist, you know, because it's more about fear. And so um, I was talking to my students this week and we were talking about this old Colin Kaepernick thing. And, um, you know, that's the quarterback for the 49ers that, you know, it's not standing for the national anthem. And a lot of people are definitely saying he's being disrespectful and he's not respecting uh, the veterans and respecting the troops. And he's, you know, um, but, but they're saying that he's being disrespectful. And it's, it's interesting. The flag, to me, number one, it's a symbol. It's not a person. So we get, we're giving anthropomorphic qualities to a thing, right? Instead of paying attention to what he's doing this, this act, or what he's protesting for, or what he's protesting about. And so I did this with my students. I wrote on the words. I wrote rights, and then I wrote war. And, and like if you could picture rights right here in the middle and then on this side of rights I put given and on this side of rights I put granted and then war I put veterans and then I put activists and so then I asked the question I said any group in this country that has been marginalized how did they get their rights were they given to them or were they granted and I was like what well, given means that they were just naturally handed over to you that means you didn't have to do anything to get them you know that just means that they were just given to you and then I was like, what group of people in the country do you know that have had it like that where rights were just given to them? And I said, oh, yeah, it's a group of people, you know, that there are. And in particular, a group of people and a group of people by a certain gender. Then I go, but then what does granted mean? That means that you had to fight for it. You had to do some kind of act. You had to protest. You had to be civilly disobedient. You you did something. Or maybe you weren't so civil or, or you weren't so nonviolent, but you did something to get the attention. And that resulted in the rights being given. Okay? And then the other thing that I asked the students, I said, if people are fighting for the rights here, that meant that people also died, too, for them to have their rights. So in this country, that means rights were granted. So that means that for people to get the rights, they had to do something. And then that also meant people died. So that means wars were fought on this land. So I'm like, who are the only people fighting wars? Who are the only people that are patriots? Your veterans who go to other parts of the world and fight for war and help us to instill our democracy there, or people who are also fighting here in their own homeland and have to be concerned about their safety here. Where we're out there fighting terrorism, that same terrorism is present here. here. And so I noticed that, you know, like when you start to pose it a certain way, then people, when they're open and when they want to receive, they oh, oh. And then you can see the wheels start turning and you can see the eyes start opening. And then it's like, well, oh, my goodness, you know. So what I'm saying is that while we have a lot of people out here who have a lot of emotions around racism, we have to be careful not to waste too much time educating people that don't want to be reached. OK, because you have to want to receive something and you have to want to be reached in order for change to actually happen. There has to be an internal calibration inside of you that leads to you wanting to change. And when we talk about this, even spiritually, I was just talking to one of my students about Peace Church and she was so uh, moved at how she's grown and how she's matured. And I was just explaining to her that that maturity and that growth, you know, she was trying to, I think, attribute it to me and to the church where well, she was doing it. And I said, and, and, and God, I mean, she knows that it came from God, but it was like, no, 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 this is about you and God, because you would not have grown and matured if you were not vulnerable and if you were not obedient and if you, if you were not open. And I was like, change can happen when people are able to be honest about who they are. Change can happen when people are able to be real about who they are. And so what we have in this country is a lot of people who are afraid to be real. You have a lot of people who are afraid to, you know, basically get, you know, in the mirror, look themselves in the mirror. I appreciate that, Des. You know, have people who are willing to look in the mirror and ask themselves, how am I being complicit in inequality in this country? How am I being complicit to sexism, racism, heterosexism, adultism, um, a classism. How, how, how am I being complicit in that? How am I doing something that contributes to another group being down or internalized, oppressed, and I'm doing it to myself? Because understand something. There is a such thing as balance. And if I'm living the good life, somebody else is living probably not so good. And so there's enough money in this world for there not to be impoverished people. <laughs> you know, and that was a point that I made this past Friday 
uh, as I was speaking um, at the filming of this movie Selma. You know, and I and I don't know how many people out there have seen it. It is a good film. Uh, just like anything, it doesn't, you know, some things are kind of, you know, like glamorized or embellished, but uh, but it did a great job of capture, capturing what was going on at that time. And uh, I was asked to speak at the function because my uncle, Reverend James Orange, like the fruit orange, and you can look him up, please, uh, is he, he, he is my uncle. He was uh, he uh, he's um, my mother's brother. So I grew up with him. I grew up around him. So I got to watch him, and, and he and Reverend. So so he was ordained. He he uh, he he was a minister, but he was a civil rights activist. He was a he was a father. He was a man. He was a big man, six three, weighed about three hundred pounds, but his heart was bigger than his stature. And you could tell by the way people responded around him. How people came to him. How people were attracted to him. And he had people of all hues around him, of all beliefs, of all of like of, of all orientations. I mean, you could see him talking to any and everybody without judging them, in public or in private, you know. And him being a Christian like that, he really helped me to see how to see the world. And having I think having a grassroots experience helps you to value humanity in a way that privilege does not. Because the more you have, the more you also are blinded to. And because uh, people in the in the U.S. don't understand the impact that the U.S. has on the world. Like, it's funny. I tell my students this. All of this stuff y'all learning about managing the environment and taking care of the environment. You are learning that because the United States has a, has a very consumptive culture. And then we have done a lot of damage to our own environment. Now that we understand the damage that we're doing, we're promoting this lovely image to the world. You know, that says, come here, send us your poor and your hungry. And we will educate you and we'll do all of this stuff for you. Oh, but when you come here, look at how we live. We, we buy the cars that we want. We buy the houses um, that that, uh, that that we want. We can tear down our land um, any way that we that we so fit, as long as we can justify how we do it environmentally, so on and so forth. Oh, but that's impacting climate change. That's messing up the world. And then when you go to another part of the world, you see that they're doing what we're doing. And now we want to assess you and monitor you and police you and say, no, don't do it. And showing the students what you're actually learning and why and why you were learning it. You know, you're learning it because our country has also promoted a lot of things in the world that people around the world are doing. And now we basically are trying to cover our behinds and backtrack. And that's what happens when you're blinded, when you're living with those blind spots. And just like our students learn their history, they, they, they're learning their history with blind spots. They're learning things about this country without knowing how this country was really and truly built. And so... Just like I said this week, monitor your time because you're fighting a big monster. You're, you are fighting systemic inertia that has been in place for a long time, for longer than you've been alive and a couple of generations in your family. And so you monitor your time because don't waste too much time fighting against people who don't want to change. Then we say monitor your energy. And I don't know if you notice, even in the Bible, Jesus didn't waste time. He didn't waste time with people who didn't want to be saved and who didn't want to be listened to. And he didn't waste too much energy on people either. He loved people, but he knew he couldn't save them all. So he'd do his thing and then he'd keep moving. And that's what we're saying to people. Be true. Be 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 humble. Be open, okay, to, to people. But don't be a doormat. Don't be a rug. Don't 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 lay on the ground and let someone walk over you. Definitely understand Dr. Smith. Don't allow people to uh, mistreat you because they're fighting with their own ignorance. See? Because it's their problem. It's not your problem. And then that's when we talk about energy because energy is something that you have a limited amount of. Just like you have a limited amount of time. The, the calendar that we work on now is um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you only have 168 hours in a week. And if some of you sleep eight of those hours a day, then right there automatically 56 are gone. So now you only have 112 hours a week. And then as you start adding it up, you start noticing like, oh man, my time is more limited, right? Well, think about the energy that you give. If you give too much energy, that energy, you could change the person that you are. You could change who you are. You could, you could change your chemistry, you know? A lot of times that's how people end up struggling with depression and a lot of other things is because they're giving that energy away. 
And a lot of that can be controlled, whether you know it can be controlled or you know the tactics to control it or not, you know, like that 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 is definitely something worth worth of worth of note or worth discussing. But when you give that energy away, it's changing who you are. That's why people who are probably extroverts who love people become introverts, or maybe vice versa. That's why people who normally probably wouldn't talk and like to be chill can become very, ah, you know, can become very animated, you know, very flamboyant, you know, because things have happened that's changed them. And so I tell people, monitor your energy. Like the kind of stuff that I talk about at work, I don't care to talk about in my personal life. So if I have to work a job where I'm educating people all the time about race issues, I don't want to be in relationship all the time with people that I have to do that with outside of work, you know, uh, because that's taken away from my energy. And um, and that means that I'm putting too much into you and you're not put pouring anything back in, 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 into me, you see. So that's why I tell people, monitor your energy. A lot of us are out here fighting a battle that can't be won without the contribution of another person. You see, we're we're fighting a war where the people who are complicit in how this war got started are sitting on the sidelines watching. And so what I'm saying is that we have to stop being the entertainers. We got to stop being gladiators all the time that's just on the quarter, that's just on the field, entertaining people, talking, talking, arguing, yelling, protesting all the time. And I'm not saying that, that there's anything wrong with, with doing the act itself. I'm just saying we got to watch how, how we're doing it. Watch yourself. Rhonda Bork, who's a minister at my home church, um, Poplar Springs, preached a sermon. This is probably about four years ago now. And it was so impactful. That's why I still remember it. And um, she and she's a sister that really got she 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 is an evangelist, hardcore God core, and got our church involved with working with our brothers and sisters that are homeless. And um, and she talks about how she you know, has lived that, that, you know, like similar life. And that's why it's so, uh, and that's why it is so salient to her and why it's so personal to her. And, uh, see, yeah, you know, Dez knows. And, um, she's passionate about this, you know? And so she does this stuff like all of the time, feeding the poor, feeding folks, clothing them out there, ministering to them, uh, when they want to be ministered to, you know, she, she knows how to do that. But she also understands this too. She understands you can't save everybody and you can't help everybody. And one thing she said is when you're doing the work of God and you start getting frustrated and so irritated that you, it's almost like you can't see straight or you really don't know which way is which. She said that's when you that's when you are in God's zone and you need to back out and you and you need to let God step in. So that's when you need to do that back out and let God step in. That's when you're doing too much. And um and I've never forgotten that. I've never, like that has always stayed with me. And for someone like me who loves people, and I know a lot of people out there, those who are even watching out, we love people. It's hard to stop. You know, it's hard. It's hard to stop, especially when you're either accustomed to not stopping, or when you think that that's what you're supposed to do to show your love or to show God's love. And you can also show God's love by not allowing yourself to get depleted. And I feel like that's how we lost a lot of our soldiers. That's how we lost a lot of our leaders. You know, is that they went so long that hatred did take them out. But then at the same time, sometimes there was an opportunity maybe for them to stop and to maybe save themselves or to protect themselves. But they didn't out of a sense of pride, out of the sense of, you know, um, you know, sacrifice. And I honor that and I respect that. And I definitely give praise to that because that takes courage and that takes another level of you know of dedication you know to to actually do it and our veterans do it too you know our veterans you know give give of themselves because of this ideal that they believe uh that has been instilled into them you know so that's why i respect it i understand that i mean i'm not born to fight <laughs> i'm trained and socialized to fight i think that i'm more born to love i have more of a capacity to love and regardless whether you do it as an activist in the street or you do it as a veteran, you know, in war, when we're fighting, there are things that we're doing that are inhumane and there are things that, that, that we're doing that's not natural to us. You know, like that's why we have to go through the, the processes that we go through to be able to do it. And so as I start to bring this to a close, I want to bring take this back to the filming, uh, to the discussion that we had on Friday, uh, watching the film Selma. 
there's a scene in that movie when Jimmy Lee Jackson gets killed. And if you um, haven't seen the movie and feel like that's ruining the movie for you, go look it up, Jimmy Lee Jackson. And um, But he gets killed after they were doing a peaceful protest at night. They were doing a night march. And um, him getting shot led to the actual march, march of Selma from Selma to Montgomery that uh, was... Um, around voting rights, but the part of the movie that was left out is why that night march actually happened. Excuse me. That night march happened because my uncle was in jail for organizing people, you know, to, to, to protest for, for, for the right to vote. And rumors had gone out that they were going to lynch him. And it was going to happen because my uncle, he knew that it was about to happen to him. And they organized that march to take the attention away. Uh, some, I mean, it was a march for peaceful protest, but it was also to take the attention away from him. And it ended in, a, in something tragic. And to see the look in his grandfather's eyes and the actor who portrayed his grandfather when he was looking at his, at his corpse, you know. Um, it's just touching, you know, because it was like this look of, you could tell that there was hopelessness there, there was helplessness, but then there's also this, this notion of being lost, like, where do I go from here, you know, and to see someone whose eyes look that way, if, if that doesn't tug, tug at your heart, I don't know, it, it, there, there, there's a hole in your heart, when you see the look on someone's face that looks helpless and hopeless and lost. And how many times have we seen people in the street that look helpless, hopeless, and lost? How many times have we seen people in our workplaces that look helpless, hopeless, and lost? Or even people in your families that look helpless, hopeless, and lost. And I say that that's the part that we need to speak to. Whether you are a person of faith or whether you are a religious person or not, you know, but that's the part in people that we need to speak to. That's the part that needs to be reached so that they can start to do the goodness that the world needs so that we can start to care for each other. But what starts to happen is that helplessness, that hopelessness, that that being lost, that gap, that hole can be filled with love or it can be filled with, with ignorance and fear. False evidence appearing appear real. And that's what has the people, those who fight against racism or fight for it and fight for sexism, that's what they're filled with. See, they're filled with the opposite. They're filled with the fear and the ignorance of what will happen if you change things. You know, and so they're fighting to keep it here. And what I'm saying is the people out here who are being who are doing the Corinthian work, who are doing the Martin Luther King work, monitor yourself because there also need to be people out here who are doing the Caesar's work or who are doing what L or Lyndon B. Johnson did back in the 60s. There are people out here who have the power. They they can just stroke a pen and things will change. They can speak it and say, do this and things will change. They can give an order and things will change. And we need those people also to step up and join this fight. Stop sitting on the sidelines and being entertained by people fighting for their rights. It's time for you to be a part of this fight. It's time for you to step up as well. It's time for you to give some energy. It's time for you to sacrifice. It is time for you to feel some pain. It is time for you it is time for you to be uncomfortable. It is time. It is time for you to step up and join this and do it with us. And one of the questions that I got on Friday is, what do you think is needed in this country? And I said it. I, and this is something I know Marcus Garvey said. This is something I think Frederick Douglass said. And something that a number of leaders said that got them, you know, that kind of made them a target. But it really is. And MLK said it as well. I said, we need a redistribution of wealth. We need a redistribution of power. We need a redistribution of a lot of things. Because even if you give me rights with no access, it doesn't mean anything. And even if you grant me rights, but you don't grant me access, you know, and to, to enjoy those rights, it's not the same. So that's why people are out here fighting people. So let's not down folks who are standing against what the symbols in this country don't represent. Let's, let's not be fooled. I know some of us say this is the greatest country on the planet. I say it's the greatest country for who? And it's the greatest country to who? Um, and, uh, but that's not for me to question whether or not you believe that for yourself. If you believe that for yourself, then, then that means that who is you? Okay. But what I want to ask you to not do is don't turn a blind eye to the fact that it's not like that for everybody. 
And that's why we have to do the work that we do. And for me, that's also why I speak the way that I speak. And for me, that's still about Jesus. That's still doing what Jesus would do. And my uncle, who was a reverend, who died February 22nd, 2008, that's what he did. So I will admit that I've been pre pre-exposed uh, to activism, to grassroots movements. I've been predisposed to women who decided to not be the norm and live the norm, change up how they dress, how they look, just because they feel like it. But they knew that it was going to maybe change or impact the way people thought about them and not in a positive way. I know what it is to watch people fight for their rights even when their life is on the line. And I know what it is to watch people fight for other people's rights and still put their own life on the line. And some people have died for it. But I also have seen change happen and things move. But I also know that just because the law gets changed doesn't mean that the battle is over. You know, we still have a supremacist paradigm that we operate under and live under in this country, in this bubble. And that's one of the reasons why people in this country don't know the impact that this country that is the best place on the earth has on the rest of the world. And so we need to stop having a blind eye. We need to stop being afraid of calling something out when we see it and understand something. I'm so proud to be here. I'm thankful to be here. Okay. But just like I can tell, I came from the best family in the world to me. There's a lot of dysfunctionality there too. See, so I'm able to own the good and the bad because nothing is ever all good. And to me, it's never all bad. And so I think that when we can look it in the eye and call it out, like I say, go to the mirror and ask yourself, how am I complicit? Then you can start to work on change because the person or the thing that you can change the most is you. And if you can change you while being in a position of influence and power, then you can change the thing that you have influence and power over. And so I'm just inviting people with privilege to come out and become a better person. I'm inviting the people with unearned benefits and unearned disadvantages to come out and become a better person. I'm inviting the people who know that they have no benefits in certain areas to stay the course, but monitor your your energy, protect yourself while you're also speaking out uh, for, for humanity. Um, I'm telling people out here who are doing it in churches, you know, to, to, to not be fooled. While they say that people are sick, our churches are sick too. And so I'm asking you to stay the course because it's not easy because when you're fighting this battle, you're not fighting against the enemy only. You're also fighting against your friends too. And um, people like Martin Luther King learned what that was, how to stand on their own two feet. That's why they were so strong. And my uncle was another one of those people. And my mother is another one of those people. And I am becoming one of those people. And I think people who are listening to this and who value this and showing me love and stuff, you're becoming one of those people. So let's keep growing. Let's keep moving. Let's keep doing it. And... I'm doing it for my future. I'm doing it for your future, too. To do this means that you are doing it in some ways altruistically. You're doing it for other people. But I also believe that I can see change, too. So there's some truism for, for me as well. So that's why I'm not doing it foolishly. I'm taking care of my time and my energy. Matter of fact, later today, I'm taking myself to get a massage, you know, kind of work this stuff out, you know, you know, get some things over. Because I believe in taking care of myself, you know, when, when I can afford to, you know, as, as best as I can. Because no one's going to be my biggest cheerleader but me. So with that, if you have any questions, any comments, remember, you can email me at Thomas R. Easley at easelybranch.com. You can leave comments on my website if you want to, RashadEasley.com, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, but I definitely ask this, if you uh, if you want to talk about anything, email me, uh, send me a message on Facebook Messenger or on that email um, that, that I sent. Talitha, you are you are very welcome. And Talitha, um, the, the song Talitha Rising is starting to move already. People are downloading it. People are loving that song. I'm so happy. It's off of the next Polly Murray project. And I believe that people like Polly Murray, I know she stood for this and she fought for this as well. So I'm standing in her shadow in a way. I'm standing on her shoulders all the way. I'm standing on the shoulders of my uncle. I'm standing on the shoulders of my mother. And I'm thankful that I still have her. Uh, I'm standing on the shoulders of my father, who's a pioneer, being one of the first blacks to desegregate areas. I'm standing on the shoulders of um, um, of my sister, who is a brilliant person, also fighting stuff presently, just like her brother is. So, you know, I'm. Um, this is this is part of this is part of what we do, but it's because we want to see a better tomorrow. 
for us and for you. So God bless you. Much love to you. Thank you for signing on early on Labor Day weekend. Please go enjoy the rest of your weekend. Try to enjoy the day as best you can. And go enjoy the sunshine if it's there. If it's windy where you are, enjoy the wind. Enjoy something that you can't see. Because that tells you something. That To me, that tells me how much God loves us to give, to, to, to give us all of this here. This is beautiful. So you are a gift. Treat yourself like that and watch how you treat other people too. Take care.